Hi everyone. I just thought I would um, show you what a beautiful day it is here in Oregon. I'm walking my dogs right now. And if I can't see your comments too well, it's because of the, of the sunglasses, but I need it because of the sun. Hi, good, <clears throat> good to see you. Playing for fun, good to see you. Hi, good to see you. And I just thought I'd talk to you for a little bit, you know, and, and, uh, and, and I just want to say, I just want to uh, thank everybody that came into my Periscope last night and supported me because I had close to, I had almost 3,400 people, which is the most I've ever had. And I'm just so thankful that the Lord has blessed me each and every every day that I do my periscopes because he's sending more and more people in there. You know, we have to get this mess. Yes, it's the most I've ever had. We need to get this message out. You know, as I've, I've got silver right now and I'm shooting for gold. Yeah, it was. It was it was great. And I'm so happy for that, too. I didn't expect it, although I did have a lot of scoffers, which I normally get. You know, and that's, that's to be expected. Scoffers are out there, you know. <clears throat> But I have to handle them the best way I can. But I'm so th appreciative for those that did come in and were willing to support me and help me with with some of the people that came in there. Because, oh yeah, I figured you were early, and yeah, I figured you were at church doing their the evangelistic thing. So that's why you didn't come in. But Dolores didn't come in either. So I don't know what happened to her. But I knew you wouldn't be there. But I'm. But you can watch the replay if you haven't yet. So feel free to watch it. It's it's going to stay on there and everything, you know. But it's like I said, we need. I had to stop to let the dogs go. Um, we need to get this message out because there's going to come some day when the message won't be allowed to be given anymore. Oh, okay, good. Um, we won't be allowed. Won't be allowed to give the message anymore. We're going to be censored, or we're going to our periscope's going to be completely gone. We're not going to be able to give the message out. So that's that's why I try to try to give it out as much as I can because if we don't, who's going to do it? You know, and. Uh, the thing of it is, you know, with Donald Trump signing that executive order to uh, against the Pope, I was thinking this morning, you don't go against the Pope for anything. And by him doing that, it's just going to cause more friction. And we know it's going to come. The National Sunday Law is going to come anyway. You know, he's just going to anger the Pope. And I'm just afraid, and I don't want to say this, but I am just afraid that the Jesuits are going to have him assassinated because of what he did because you're going against the Pope and you never do that I hope that's not true but it's it's uh, possible that it could happen you know and the thing of it is the periscope I did last night had to do with Mike Pence we don't want him in there because you'd have a Jesuit for a president and it's, you know and once once he becomes president you know and that's what happens if if uh, Donald Trump's assassinated and and uh, Mike Pence were to become president everything would be over. It would come so fast because you know that he's going to do the Pope's bidding. Um, yeah, he, he'll be bad. You know, he will be bad. But he, um, and that's the thing. Um, no, I'm not drunk. How dare you ask that? And, um, they, they just don't understand. Um, if he, oh, thank you. If he, uh, um, if he takes over the presidency, things are going to be different, a lot different. Um, well, then don't, then you just leave this periscope. Yes, yes, Mike Pence. Um, that's, yeah, see, he's a Jesuit. I know a lot of people don't know he's a Jesuit. Um, and the thing, uh, and you don't know about Jesuits. Jesuits are the secret military in, in the Catholic Church, and they are, they will, they will kill you as to look at you. The Jesuits had, had Kennedy killed. And they've had a few others killed, Alberto Rivera, and um, I believe that uh, some of the other ones were killed. And it, 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 they will kill you just as, uh, that, rather than look at you. They'll do anything they can because they don't want you speaking out against any of them. And um, I didn't vote for him, if that's what you mean. But all I can say is let's give him a chance to prove himself. However, um, you know, some of the things he's doing I may not agree with, but he is the president now. Um, and that's the, that's the thing. However, we as Seventh-day Adventists, we know that we don't want church and state to come together. How we know it's going to come together. And him, by him citing this executive order, it may be delaying it for a while. Because I think it's, it may be God's providence because we're not ready. So he's going to give us a little more time to get the message out. But the, in the same hand, going against the Pope like that is very dangerous because he set himself up to possibly get assassinated. I hate to say it, but I'm, 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 it, it could very easy, 
um, very easily happen. Yes, I believe I was created. God created me. He created you. He created us in his image. And and I hate to, I, I don't want anything to happen to Donald Trump. But you know, <laughs> like I said, going against the Pope is something you really shouldn't do. And um, I, I hope he doesn't get assassinated, but only time will tell. Um, why didn't I vote? You know why I didn't vote? Because it was, neither one of them I felt were, were fit to be president. Hillary had been in uh, public office before. She wasn't very good at what she did. Donald Trump had never been in political office. And I didn't feel he was fit to be president. And I, I want to give him the a benefit of the doubt right now because he's done a lot more for this country in the last, you know, month or two that he's been in the White House than uh, Obama did in eight years. So that's all I'm going to say. I don't, and the reason I don't support Trump is because I support God. God is who I support. Trump is just a man. And there isn't anything he can do to make this country great. Nothing he can do at all. No, people say, well, we're going to make, make America great again. There's no way he can make America great because we know that prophecy is going to be fulfilled. Um, that's right, he sure did. And we know that prophecy is going to be fulfilled. And there's nothing that he can do or any of us can do to delay the National Sunday Law. He may have delayed it for a little bit by, you know, signing the executive order against the Pope. But then, like I said, I feel, and I don't know if you, if you agree with me or not, but I, 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 I think he signed his death decree. He's, you know, his own death warrant. And I, I don't want to see that happen because if Mike Pence gets in there, it's going to happen sooner than we think. And I really don't want him in there, but... Um, uh, well, I think it's kind of a bunch of bunk, the climate change. I don't agree with the climate change myself, but that's just my opinion. And uh, we just have to pray for Donald Trump that nothing happens to him. But in the same hand, uh, doing what he did was, was, was something da dangerous that, you know, I wouldn't want to go against the Pope. However, I talk about, about the Pope and how... how evil he is and that all the time but see I'm not in political office either so that I really you know nothing's going to happen to me but when you take a person like Donald Trump who's in political office he's the president of the United States and goes against the goes against the Pope that's not going to very vote very well for him the thing of it is he's supposed to go see him in May I don't know what they're going to talk about what are they going to have to talk about when he goes visits him in May God only knows you know and yeah, you're right. Satan is making it. You're for sh you're right. He's he exactly is, and that's the thing people don't understand. Satan does exist, and he's out there doing a lot of things. He's trying to destroy everybody, and he's he may he he's the one that's going to cause. It. If Donald Trump gets assassinated, it'd be Satan that caused it, nobody else. Because the Jesuits are not godlike. The Jesuits are satanic. They're evil, and if they do it, it's because Satan is backing them, not God, and. Not right now. God is in control. Um, is being a Satanist wrong? Well, yes, it is. Hi, Philip. Good to see you. Yes, being a Satanist is wrong because you, you're for Satan. You're not for God. You put all your faith and trust in, in, in us, in Satan. You shouldn't do that. Never should you put your faith and trust in because he's going to take you right down. Yes, he does. He works through men. The thing that is, you don't understand. Satan's going to take you places you don't want to go and have you do things you wouldn't really want, would normally do. And that's not good. And there's a lot of Satanists out there. And we need to pray for them because there's still hope for them. Hi, Philip. Good to see you. There's still hope for them to come out, come out of what they're doing. Very much so. You know, we need to pray for, for all these that hang on to their sins instead of um, choosing God. Because there's so many of them out there that are chosen to be in sin instead of having God in their life. Um, yes, he does. He, he does. Satan, Satan will, will tempt men. The thing of it is, Satan will tempt men to do things that they wouldn't normally do. He'll whisper in their ear or whatever, things like that. And when he does that, the people yield. And that's the thing. No. And they, and they will yield. And, and we, can't, we can't let that happen. Satan is, is working as hard as he can to destroy. Sorry about the dogs barking. Um, oh, I, I surely will. Um, he, he tempts them like Eve, exactly. We, you know what happened in the Garden of Eden, how he tempted Adam and Eve into sinning. And that's where sin came in at. And that's where the, the false doctrine of heaven and hell came in at too. Because God told them that, that they were going to start slowly dying. Which they were. And the robe of light left them. They had to, put fig leaf, had to make fig leaves to have clothing. But the thing of it is, 
Satan knew what God said. He says, well, did God say you're going to um, die? And they said, yes. Well, you're not going to die. You're going to be like God's and live forever. And that's the sad thing of it. That's where that heaven or hell theory came in at. And people have got to stop believing that you go to heaven or hell when you die because you don't go anywhere but into your grave when you die. And this whole thing is false doctrine. And the thing of it is, these preachers that preach it have everybody uh, deceived. They haven't, they, they haven't been darkness. And I don't know if they don't know the truth themselves or they know it and are afraid to say anything because they don't want the congregation to leave the church. And that's sad because all they want is their money. And, you know, that, that isn't right. Salvation should mean more to them than money. But when they, when they get, start getting money, it seems like the more they get, the more they want which is Benny Hinn, John Hagee, and those like that. The more they get, the more they want. And it's a shame. But they have so much money and so much wealth that instead of taking that wealth and helping other people with it, they're taking the wealth and they're benefiting themselves, buying things like airports and airplanes. And uh, yeah, some know and yeah, you're probably, you're probably right. Some know and some don't. But the ones that do know, why aren't they telling their congregation? That's the sad thing. They're not telling them what they need to tell them. They're keeping them in darkness. I think basically what it is is they don't want them to leave the church because, like I said, of the money. If if they leave the church and they don't come back, then they've lost that money, and and then they're not then then they're not going to have the money that they want to get things that they want with them. But they don't those false prophets like Kenneth Hagin don't understand that they're as lost as lost can be unless they come out of their their delusion. Hi Valerie, good to see you. That they come out of their delusion, their deluded state, and there's and the state that they have everybody in. They're in darkness too. And that's the thing. You go to those meetings of Benny Hinn or John Hagin or stuff like that. Look what look what they do to the people. They have them convinced that they can forgive their sins. You know, they'll pray to God and forgive their sins. They can't do anything. Um and that's that's the thing. They think that they can they can forgive people's sins. Only God can forgive people's sins. But yet those people go up there and and you know be prayed for and be healed and stuff like that. Maybe just a moment in time, but they're not healed permanently. And um, you're agnostic. Well, your your thing, but is you can't be sitting on the fence. Uh, and that's the thing. There's no sitting on the fence. Either you're for God, or you're for Satan. And I don't have my Bible with me because I'm walking. And that's the thing. Um, God is throughout the Bible. And, you, and you're people that say, well, I don't believe in God. Well, if you don't believe in God, you believe in the devil. And then some people say, well, they don't believe in the devil. Well, that's not true either. You have to believe in something. I mean, sitting on the fence is not right. It's one or the other. It's either, it's either God or man. And that's the thing. You, you can't do that. So I, I hope everybody chooses God because he's the right way. Satan is the wrong way. We know he's going to take a lot of people... Um, what about other religions? Well, they're the same thing. They need to come to God, too. There's only one God in heaven. We all serve the same God. But the problem of it is they don't worship on the same day. They, they're they doing things contrary to the Word of God, to the Ten Commandments, because they're choosing their own way. They're choosing to be in their sin for a time. And people that are choosing to be in sin aren't going to make it to heaven if they continue in their sin, because they find it... A lot more fun to be in their sin than to come to God. And that's sad because I've had some come on Periscope and say, well, if I can't do in heaven what I do on this earth, I don't want to go there. That's the wrong mindset. And that, and that's the thing. It's terrible to feel that way because we're not going to eat any things we have on this earth in heaven. We wouldn't want them up there. We're going up there to spend our eternity with Jesus and our loved ones. We're not going up there to... To, to do the things we do on this earth. I mean, that is crazy. And for people to think like that, I don't know where their ideas are, but their ideas are not in the right place. You know, like I said, they're in, they're in sin. They've been in sin for so long that they don't know anything else. Um, that's right. He does. He has put error into the lot of a lot of the churches. And, that, and the Sunday keeping churches, they have a lot of error. I'm not saying they don't love the Lord. I'm not saying that. But they have the error in the churches when they say that Sunday is the Sabbath and you go to church on, on Sunday. God never said to go to church on Sunday. He never commanded us to go to church on Sunday. And they go to church on Sunday because of the resurrection. They can't prove from the Bible that you go to church on Sunday because of the resurrection. It's not biblical. It's not in the Bible. I'm, I'm going through the fourth time and I've never seen it yet. It's just not there. But the, the thing there, they, every which way they try to justify going to church on Sunday that 
you know, God's going to accept them just the way they are, which he does. But a lot of people are willfully sinning by going to church on Sunday. They know that Saturday is the Sabbath and they refuse to do it. They refuse to heed it. And that's where they're in dangerous ground. Because when God, when you know something and refuse to do it, that's when God's going to hold you accountable. You're going to be held accountable for more for what you know than what you don't know. No, it is not. Sunday is not the Sabbath. Ecle um, Exodus 20. And we can get your Bible out and read it. Exodus 20, verses 8 to 11. No it's, no, it's not. But the Bible says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy, thy God. The seventh day is the Sabbath. We may, our calendars may have changed a few times, but the days of the week have never, ever changed. They have all remained the same. And the Jews have kept Sabbath from the very beginning. They have never lost sight of the Sabbath. The only problem with the Jews is they haven't accepted Jesus, but they never lost sight of the Sabbath. And we're going to be keeping the Sabbath in heaven, so why not start now? It's not hard. It's not an impossibility. It'd be a lot easier to keep it in heaven if you keep it now. And, and that's the thing. Uh, you people that saying Sunday is the Sabbath, you say that because you've been taught that your whole life. And I don't blame you for it. I blame your preachers because they haven't told you the truth. But also, you need to get into the Bible and read it for yourself. The preachers, some of them will stand up there and, and talk, and they really don't know what they're saying, or they haven't got a Bible passage to back them up. And that's not right. You know, as long as they can keep you in darkness and get you to believe in what they want you to believe, they think they, that they've got it. You know, they've got you right where they want you. And it's sad to say, but a lot of the Sunday keeping preachers are going to be lost. They're not going to go to heaven because they're not telling the people the truth. They need to come out of darkness into the marvelous light. They need to come out of Babylon like everybody else. Everybody needs to come out of Babylon. You're all sitting in Babylon, not, 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 not realizing that you're going to church on the wrong, wrong day. It's false worship to go to church on Sunday. Very, very, it's been false worship for, for a long time. See, you don't understand. The Catholics are the ones that change the worship day. They said by their authority, they had the right to change the day from Sabbath to Sunday. So everyone has been following that to this day. Um, what if you don't ever go to church? Well, I, I don't know why you wouldn't want to go to church. Because going to church, you are closer to Jesus than, than not going. I, I get disappointed when I can't get to church for one reason or another. I, I love the Lord so much that... Um, I want to go to church and it's funny though I woke up this morning and I was a, a day ahead I was thinking today was Sabbath I was going to get ready for church and I got to realize and today's Friday and, you know I, I'm that's how anxious I am for the Sabbath you know I don't know if you've ever had those days or not but anyway I'm just so glad that I know about the Sabbath and like I said those people that may be in here and they didn't know before that I used to be in the Sunday keeping church for 27 years of my life I kept Sunday without even realizing I was doing the wrong thing. I, yes, I did. And my in-laws at the time took my husband and I to Fort Myers, my, my ex-husband, we were married at the time, but took us to Fort, Fort to, to a church, a Seventh-day Adventist church in Fort Myers, Florida, because they had, a, they had a, a home home in Fort Myers, Florida, and we went there one winter to, to spend a month or so with them. And they took us to the meetings, not really realizing what the meetings were about. Well, after three weeks, we both accepted the Sabbath because we had to. It was pointed out to us in the Word of God what, this, what the Sabbath is and what we need to do. And the thing of it is, they didn't like it because we accepted the Sabbath. They said, well, you fell hook, line, and sinker, didn't you? I said, yes, we did. We fell hook, line, and sinker for the truth, and we fell hook, line, and sinker for the Lord. You know, and they never did They never did come to Jesus as far as the Sabbath is concerned. I mean, they love Jesus and stuff, but they never did, they never did accept the Sabbath. You know, and they're both gone now, you know, and I don't know whether they're going to be saved or not. But, um, no, I did not vote. Uh, that's not part of my periscope, but since you asked, I did not vote. I didn't feel there was, there was, either one were fit to be president. I still don't, however, must give him a chance because he's been in office since January. So, must, you know, but other than that, no, I don't feel, you know, because when you think, when you get down to it, they're not elected, they're selected, because it was in God's plan that Trump get in there, for one reason or another, we don't know what God, what God's plans are, but I think with him signing that executive order, 
that was uh, started right there because I, I still say that either him or Mike Pence are going to be the catalyst to bring on the National Sunday Law. And wow, 475, that's great. They're going to be the catalyst to bring on the National Sunday Law. And we know that's coming around, that's right around the corner. We don't know when it's coming, but it's going to be here before too long. We've got to be ready for it. And I, like I said, I think him signing that executive order like that is giving, we're more or less on borrowed time. We're getting a little bit more time to get ready. What is the Sunday Law? It's enforced Sunday worship. Where at that time when, there, when the law is enforced, the whole world is going to go globally now. It's going to start in the United States and go globally. We're all going to be required to worship on Sunday in order to buy or sell. But the thing of it is, when you worship on Sunday, you take the mark of the beast and there's no turning back. Once you take the mark of the beast, you're automatically lost. You suffer the seven last plagues and you'll also burn up in hellfire. So I don't want anybody to, to uh, take the mark of the beast un unwillingly because it's unnecessary. And the thing of it is, there's going to be a lot of people that are in their graves that already have taken the mark of the beast, didn't really realize it, you know. And that's why I do these, because you need to know the truth, but don't turn your back on it. When you hear the truth, accept it. If you turn your back on it, then it becomes dangerous to you. you you'll grieve away the Holy Spirit. And, and once you grieve away the Holy Spirit, that's it. However, the Holy Spirit is slowly being withdrawn from the earth now. And during the National Sunday Law, the Holy Spirit will be completely withdrawn, and we're going to have to stand on our own two feet. And we're also, we're also going to have the close of probation for us, each and every one of us. The door of probation is going to be closing for each and every one of us. We don't know when that will be, but it but behooves us all to be true to God and stay true, because when that door of probation closes, we want to be on the right side, not the wrong side. There also will be a mass door probation closing during the National Sunday Law. In case some of you don't know what that is, that's we're all under probation right now. Basically, when the door closes, it's like at the time of Noah, when God shut the ark, the door ark, the door, the, the door of the ark, and the weak, wicked people outside were told that once the door was shut, they couldn't get in. Well, you know, they went to the door when the water started re coming up, and they knocked on the door to let in. That's when the door. The door of probation are more or less closed for them. God shut the door. Basically, that's what happened to us. The door of probation is going to be shut. And if we're righteous, we remain that way. Unjust, remain that way. For just, remain that way. And wicked, whatever. So we all want to be on the right side. You don't want to be on the wrong side. And we have to keep, we have to stay true to God and do exactly what God asks us to do. And the thing of it is, belief in the Lord is one thing for salvation, but also obedience. The only way you can be obedient to the Lord is you have to love the Lord enough to want to obey Him. Because John 14, 15 says, If ye love me, keep my commandments. How many people really love Him enough to want to keep His commandments? Not very many. The Sunday keepers say they love Him. And I'm not saying they don't. But the thing of it is, they don't understand. They're worshiping the sun god. They're not really honoring Jesus because their worship is in vain. When you, you have a chance, those of you in here that are skeptics, read Mark 7, 7-9 where it talks about in vain they do worship me, teach for doctrines the commandments of men. It talks right there that, that the people that more or less that they're choosing doctrine, Sarah, they're choosing doctrine over, over the commandments. And that's so sad. Most people have done that. They, because the Catholics changed the day. They figure it's all right to keep that day. You know something? They should be the only ones keeping the sat, keeping Sunday. You know, they should be the only ones keeping it. They are the ones that changed it shouldn't be the Protestants. Protestants say they're, uh, that they're protesting. But what are they protesting? Nothing. For them, the protest is over because they're following the Catholic Church and their false doctrines. For us Seventh-day Adventists, the protest is not over because we don't accept the, the Catholic Church in any way, shape, or form. We do not accept their doctrines. We do not accept the Sunday-keeping church part of it or any of it. And yet, most of, and all the Protestant churches keep it. And, and that's sad because there's no justification for it. But they've been doing it for so many years that they don't know any other way out. So they continue to keep it. Uh, yeah, yeah, but that's, that's the thing. People don't understand. We will be judged by the commandments because you're at National Sunday Law. We're either gonna to have to take the seal of God, which is the Sabbath, or you take the mark of the beast. There is no middle ground. And we know that those of us that don't take the mark of the beast, we're gonna have a death decree put on our heads. But that's okay. It's only just a moment in time anyway. And if, if you're willing to die for your faith, 
that's a good thing because look what Jesus did for us. He died for us and we should be willing to die for him as well. And there's going to be a lot of people martyred. Not everybody's going to be martyred, but there's going to be people martyred during that time. We all have to be willing to stand up and, and be counted and say, I'm not going to deny my faith. I'm not going to deny Jesus. I'm going to stay true to God and I'm going to do what I have to do, even if, I, if it means losing my life. A lot of people are not going to do that because they don't want to lose their life. You know, they'll take the mark of the beast because they want to be able to buy or sell. And they don't want to have the death decree on their head. And that's so sad, too, because Jesus died for everybody. They should be willing to give their life up for other people, for too. I mean, he, after all, he gave his life up for them. Shouldn't they be willing to give their life up for him? I had to stop. And that's the thing. We all should be willing to, to give our lives, you know, if, if need be. If he asks us to give our lives for him, we should be willing to do it. And and not bat an eye. And... and Say we're going to stand. We're going to stand true to God. We're going to we're going to keep the Sabbath, come what may, and that's the problem. A lot of people don't do want to do that. They want to they want to deny the sab the Sabbath. They want to keep their Sunday, thinking it's going to get them get them into heaven. But Sunday is not going to get us into heaven. It's going to keep us out more than it's going to get us in. So I just implore all of you to do what you need to do to keep the Sabbath. I'm getting my mail. Uh, do what you need you need to do to keep the Sabbath and stand true to God because I don't want him <laughs> yeah you're right the thing that is people like to use that acts 20 verse 7 as meaning that that uh, they can they can uh, wor worship on Sunday but there was nothing about worship on that day that's the problem there was nothing about worship on that day at all and yet they they say it was well I'm home now and I might do another periscope a little later um, or maybe I'll get one ready to do in a little bit, but I'll do one sitting in the living room. But I, I thank you all for, for coming in and supporting me. Yeah, it was dark, supporting me, and, and you all have a good night or day, and I'll come in a little later. I'll take care. Bye-bye.